what's up everybody welcome back to another youtube video of mine if you're returning thank you welcome back i appreciate your support so much if you're new hello i'm kara better known as the study reckless here on youtube and on instagram which will be in the link below if you're new welcome i hope that you'll stay and subscribe and see i hope to see you in future youtube videos as you can tell i'm not really good at this so <laughs> So hopefully, hopefully you still stick around. Today's video is going to be really similar to my last upload, and except um, it's not going to be about vocabulary, it's going to be about grammar. So I'm going to be telling you guys how I used to study grammar and the new way I've implemented um, learning grammar as of recently. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, so to better understand how I studied grammar in the past, I thought it would be a great idea to bring up my old notebooks and my old three grammar books that I used to use mainly, along with um, language apps. I do want to give a disclaimer that I used language apps way before I started working in books. So uh, I was using apps for about the first year, I want to say. The first year I was using apps. And after I completed um, the courses on the apps, specifically Lingo Deer, I was working on Lingo Deer specifically. And after I finished the two courses on that, that's when I got into books. So, yeah, this is going to be coming into my second year of language learning with Korean that I started using these books and using notebooks. Well, I kind of use um, notebooks as well to write down example sentences. So, anyway, let's get let's get into it. Okay, so this is my very first Korean notebook, and I'm going to be completely honest, honest with you. I don't remember anything I've written in this. I haven't touched this in a while, um, in a long while, and I honestly forgot about it. So what you're seeing, I'm seeing for the first time in a long time. So <laughs> let's, hope it's, let's hope it's something meaningful. But I know that, before we um, go into it, I know that I did write a lot of um, sample sentences from Lingo Deer in here. This is the notebook I used for um, Lingo Deer, which is why it says speak my lingo, you know, play on words again. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's get into it. Oh, look, here you have the date that I started the language. Good. Here's the consonants and the vowels. Here, right here, this specifically is the is the structure of Korean sentences, just in case you didn't know that. So it's going to be subject, object, and then the verb is always at the end. Always. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay. see, so look, yeah, right here, lingo here. Um, but here's some useful verbs I wrote down. That's nice. And then you get over here and look at this monstrosity. Monstrosity. <laughs> um, don't write in romanized Korean guys don't wow I did not know that I did this I don't remember writing my sentences like this but this is news to me yeah so here's some words but yeah like I said um, in my opinion it's not a good idea to write in romanization oh look drops I was using drops hmm. Um, but as I was saying, it's not going to be the most accurate you can get. I'd, I'd say if you're looking, if you're trying to be very accurate with your Korean pronunciation, I would look into um, listening to natives before you, um, before anything else. Oh wow, I'm shocked guys. I didn't know that I was writing. I don't remember writing any of this and, <laughs> and romanized. I'm kind of disappointed in myself. But yeah, see, look. Um, anyway, getting off of that topic, as you can see, as, oh yeah, let, let's do this. This is a good one. So as you can see, um, past the romanization, <laughs> I am, um, I was, this is how I learned the Korean sentence structure. Because look, here, I wrote it at the beginning. And as I was learning with Lingo Deer, 
um, I would write down their example sentences and this I think was a big helper and a big factor in me understanding how to structure Korean sentences. Um, I'm not perfect at it. I'm still learning the language. I'm not perfect at it, but I'm really, I think I'm really good at it. I'm good enough at it <laughs> to understand it. Um, but yeah, so my whole point of this is that this is what I did at the very, in the very first year that I was learning Korean. This is how I would understand the sentence forming. This is how I understood sentence forming for the language. I would recommend getting a notebook, getting an app that you trust, and, um, oh, that's the end of it. And then, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, so, overall my tip for you is to, for sentence forming, first understand that Korean sentences are formed with subject, object, verb. Verbs are always at the end. Um, and when you're trying to, when you're a beginner in the language, I recommend figuring out the sentence structure very for, as one of the first things you do, such as um, learning the alphabet and everything. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep my iPad on. <laughs> But um, yeah, so this is the first notebook. This is what I did with um, Lingo Deer. And actually I should pull it up. I should pull the app up. Okay, so here we are. So this is gonna be the Lingo Deer app. And oh look, it's already in Korean. Okay, so I would, um, at the end of each, of each lesson, let's see how to, so that's the vocabulary. Oh yeah, and I would do this as well. You'll see this a lot more when we get into my other notebooks, but I would really, I took so much pride in going to these notes that they had on the app. This was like, like I said, this app was all I needed. Lingo Deer was such a great app for me. Um, it was pretty much my first year of language learning and this really helped me with, with um, let me get a little closer for you guys. Hold on, let me try it this way. Yeah, so it would be like this. So I would do the lesson, do both the lessons, and before it was updated like this because it looked completely different, but I would do the lessons. Um, then I do the story and the speaking that came at the end of the lessons, and then I would take notes either that day or the next day. So that's how I learned um, sentence forming and whatever grammar they taught at that time because um, it's it's different um, for each lesson. So like right here, you learn e, ga, da, 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 e, isimida. So it would be like that for where is, dot, dot, dot. And then shopping, you have ormainika, of course. So different grammar structures were taught. Ooh, let me back this up a little bit. So different grammar structures were taught within this app depending on the, the, um, unit unit you were in and I found that really helpful at one point I decided to clear all of my history all of my progress I mean with it and I redid it so that was that was another way for me to review as you can see I haven't used um, specifically this one yet this um <laughs> this language in a while so that's why that's like that but yeah um, Let's get into my next notebooks. Okay, so this is my first, well, this is my second, but first official notebook for learning Korean. This is what I used with Lingo Deer, right there. <laughs> Big letters, Lingo Deer. <laughs> but yeah, here I, getting into the basics of it, this is what I did, so I wrote down who, what, when, where, why, and how. You know, just making it very detailed. I like to keep things very organized so that I know how to find things quicker. Here's where I wrote down all the contents for the first um, course in Lingo Deer. So that's even more depth for that. But yeah, I started this notebook. Oh, look. Okay, so I started this notebook in August 24th, 2018. So that's when I started writing this stuff down outside of the past notebook I showed you. So here we have again, look at me, 
Look at me and my mistakes. <laughs> Look at this. Quiero. Quiero. Oh, wow. It has a nice ring to it, huh? Quiero. <laughs> anyway, so here I have again the consonants and the vowels, the sentence structure, and then this is when the fun begins. So, getting into the first unit, we have nationality. This is when I started writing um, it down in the Korean, in actual Korean, instead of the romanization. I still added it, but I think throughout this notebook I began to stop using the romanization because I was like you know what this is taking up too much space in the notebook and I don't think I need it anymore I think I'm pretty good without it so this is how else I would study grammar so um, it's still on lingo dear it's still with the app this is completely lingo dear this is all lingo dear and I, that's why I've been such an advocate for it for a very long time because it's so good and a lot of people don't believe me or I wouldn't say they don't believe me but I say people aren't convinced enough there you go I wouldn't say they're as convinced as I've um, tried to make them to be not forcefully but you know what I mean like I'm trying to like like help you out guys and <laughs> nobody's taking it but I understand um, lingo deer isn't a free app I got it while it was still cheap so that's that's good I guess <laughs> but um yeah, as you can see, just writing down these different sentences helps me understand how to form the sentence structure. And that's what I'm really trying to touch on here is the sentence structure is really the first thing that you want to focus on when you're getting into grammar. Because um, there's, there's a lot of ways to form sentences, yes, in Korean. But if you can get the basics down of saying saying a is b or a is a is at b or stuff like that simple things like that like location or things being something like i am a teacher which i'm not but <laughs> it's the first thing that came to mind but anyway um i am a student or i'm at school stuff like that if you can get that basic stuff down you can begin to add it on and then that's when the grammar comes in towards the end when you can start saying things with a little more funk, a little more style, a little more pizzazz, a little more being more natural than the average um, learner. But that's in the later journey of your Korean study. So focus on the sentence structure and understanding the SOV method, the subject object verb. Remember, verb is always at the end. But anyway, here, you know, I got a little colorful with everything because, let's see what this little note is. Things I'm learning. Oh, I know what this is for. I know what this is for. Okay, so before we get into that, I just wanna take you back. I just wanna take you back really quick, round it all up for this section of the video. This section of the video was for sentence forming. This is the this is the root, this is the foundation of where I learned how to form sentences and this is how you build upon your Korean grammar. So I really think it is important that you understand the structure of Korean sentences, which right here, we have it right here, let's show you again. Sentence structure, subject, object, verb, SOV, always remember that. Um, and that is, that is where you wanna start when you're on your grammar journey as a beginner and I think it's always um, important to remember. Hopefully people will remember that as well. I mean, I think they would. Um, sorry for all this hand movement and if that's making you a little annoyed. <laughs> yes, sentence structure is the first place, is the first place, the first spot I um, started with my Korean grammar journey. Okay, now let's move on. I lost my train of thought. So I'm gonna stop it here. I lost my train of thought, sorry guys. Um, but yeah, this is, that is what I would study next in terms of grammar. Um, it would be particles and conjugating. So yeah, I would focus on that next and how you can do that before I leave this um, section of the video. Um, how I would learn particles, I would say apps are really good and YouTube. Those two, it's really easy. 
actually going on websites just looking up um, let's say for particles if you want to know the particle e e ita that's a grammar and it has a particle in it in it so e ita grammar grammar and you can look that up on Google or any search engine you use and you should see Korean websites that are teaching let's let's look it up right here Eh, it the hope you can see that and then grammar Oop. and then like this sorry it's on dark mode um, but yeah as you can see you'll see different um, Korean blogs or but you get my drift so that's what I would study next but yeah Let's just move on from this one and get into the next section. Okay, hello to this section, guys. Welcome. Um, I think I said that the opposite way around. Let's do that again. Welcome to this section, guys. Hello. <laughs> um, this is my second Korean notebook. As you can see, welcome back. I came to a new notebook. October 4th, 2019. Nice, nice. So, this one... I worked in this book with um, so we're gonna go through how I use this book to learn grammar and yeah I'm gonna try to keep it more simple in this video for you guys in this section of the video I mean but yeah you know what let's just leave it on this one sorry <laughs> okay we're ready we're ready okay <laughs> let me get one that's more specific Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Okay, so yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so. <clears throat> Ooh, sorry guys, been talking for a minute. Okay, so. <clears throat> so I'd go through, highlight the grammar structure, and I'd look for that. I'd look for the exact definition because sometimes in these grammar books they add extra stuff around it. So I'd like to make sure that I highlighted, highlighted the specific definition. That way it was easier for me to write it down right here. That way it was easier for me to write it down and understand what it means. And after that, you would see here I would um, write down the definition write down the grammar structure, the grammar um, expression, expression, and then write my own examples, get the corrections, important vocabulary, and then the extra information would be left at the bottom that way so it didn't distract me from the actual definition. But yeah, this part of the video is about um, how I use this book. So I hope that helped you a bit. I I would go through each section just to round everything up in this part of the video. I would go through each section, take my notebook out. Well, actually, I would take it out afterwards. So when I reviewed, when I wrote down my notes, this would be either after I um this would be after I finished the section or the chapter or the next day to review. So that's when my notes would come in. But the first day that I'm opening a book, it would be here, let's get into go back to one so I'm into unit 5 turn it over to the first lesson I'd look at the grammar structure read the sample sentences look for the exact definition of the word of the grammar look at the conjugation because like I said conjugation was very big for me at this time I was focused on particles and conjugating as a beginner um, in Korean trying to focus on the the grammar structure and well, the sentence structure I mean and understand that so conjugating was very big for me and then I look at the sample sentences and these right here are very important as well but you can always look it up you know if you need more help so yeah here here I'm getting a little bit more detailed into it conjugating is so important guys focusing on conjugation how to conjugate and what it, things look like when it's conjugated is very important so yeah example sentences definition 
and how to conjugate in, in the KGOI books are what I focused on. And then the next day or later after I finished the chapter, that's when I came in to the um, notebook and wrote it down. So hopefully that was put into simple terms. I will have the comment section open for you guys to ask me any more open-ended questions about, you know, just anything you have, any questions you have about um, learning Korean grammar as a beginner. So yeah, on to the next section. Welcome to the last section of this video, of part one of this video, of how I used to study Korean grammar. and. In the second portion of this video, I, I will get into how I am currently studying it. So, this book is My Weekly Korean Vocabulary, book one. There's two books. But this book, I'm going to say it here and now, phrase books are holy grails. They, they're not talked about enough. People don't appreciate them enough, I think. But phrase books are really good. Ones like this. Ones... Maybe I should say example sentence books. Phrase books like with expressions and, and sayings, you know, short, quick expressions you can say and little phrases you can say. I think it's really, I think it's really good. So this is what also helped me understand, um, what was the word, oh my God. Sentence structure. This is what helped me understand the Korean sentence structure as well reading these example sentences then reading on the side all these different things I didn't write in this book I didn't want to write in it um, so like here's an easy one here's a super easy one it thought to be there to exist to have so this is how I would understand the sentence structure here this is how I would go through the book I would go through the book looking at each example sentence really trying to understand it at that time I had a lot of desire to just understand the language and I was so focused on trying to be able to read it, read it correctly and so this is what helped me um, focus on this is what helped me learn the sentence structure I don't know how more in depth I can get with this specifically like phrase books are really good for just understanding the sentence forming of words and Here's another one. Here's another good one. But yeah, that's what I have to say for um, sentence structure. Sentence, I'm, ugh, phrase books. Phrase books and, it's, and expression books. They're really good for if you're trying to understand the, the sentence structure of, of um, Korean, the Korean language. It's also good for grammar. They got some stuff here on the side, but they don't go into in too much depth. depth for it so I would really say this is more focused on the structure of the sentences so that's what phrase books are good for and I really recommend getting getting one like this it doesn't have to be this exact one but one that gives you expressions like this would be good to have it would be really good to have you can see all the sentences and it's not just like just like short sentences they get really long sentences in here as well so yeah that's all for this section and all for this first part of the video. I will see you in the next part where I will be talking about how I am going to be learning grammar now. Okay, so this is the second part of the video. I wanted it to be um, on me so I could give my hands a rest. A rest. Um, but yeah, so this is my... Ooh, you can't see that. How do people do that? Okay, here it is. Okay, so this is my old Korean book, um, old Korean grammar book. I remember when I was, um, when I had just got this notebook, I was like, this is going to be the holy grail of Korean grammar notebooks. You guys watch and see. And now look at it. It is a holy grail <laughs> because I'm telling you, every any Korean grammar you can think of right now it probably has I'm telling you this is grammar from the KGUI books grammar from the talk to me in Korean books grammar from vitamin Korean books
grammar from Real Life Korean Conversation Intermediate Book, which is right here. I'm going to get into that. So this has so many expressions in it that I um, have written. And it even has um, translations for like things I would do in my vitamin Korean books as well, which I really recommend. That's another, that's another little pro tip I recommend. Um, translate, translate. Translating is good. So you know the dialogues at the end of each unit for the vitamin Korean books, there's like a dialogue you listen to. Listen to it, follow along, and write down what you hear. It goes slow enough and you can replay it as many times as you want. I know I did, but it worked out in the long run because look at this. See that? Anyway, um, so how I'm learning grammar now is instead of taking extremely long notes like you've seen in the last section, if you watched it and, and you didn't skip to this part, which is okay if you did, it doesn't matter. I'm, I, I wanna help you guys and I hope that whatever part you jump to, it's really helpful. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, okay, let me go to a, a very basic section. One that's where it's like just the bare minimum <laughs> of what I'm doing. Um, I guess it would be in these first pages. So, no, you can't really see it that good. Um, one second. Hmm. Oh yeah, and from the Ihua, Ihua Hanguko books. I also have grammar from those books as well. I really recommend those books, to be honest. They're really good, especially the, the workbooks as well. So let's just say this one. Let's just say this one. This one looks the plainest, sorry. Um, I was. It took a while to find one because they're kind of scattered, but here's a good example of one. So I would go through, and this is for my Korean um, real life Korean conversations book I really recommend this as well so I would go through this book each pattern um, so right here there's a grammar pattern here that's one another grammar pattern two oh that's three oh, oh. sorry skipped a page then right here So I would go through each um, pattern. I'd write down the the pattern itself right here. And it would have two similar patterns that you could use. So I would write those down as well. So the, the original pattern would be right here. And then the other two patterns would be right here. So I'd write those down. And then I'd write down what it meant in English. And then I'd write down my own example sentences so that is how i'm learning korean grammar now just to make it very simple i'm writing down the verb oh, i'm writing down the grammar pattern writing down the english translation as simple as i can get it and that's what i like about talk to me in korean books um not just their their um course books not just their not just these books and all of their books they um they give you an exact translation of what it would be so if you wanted to say let's go um let's verb i should say it would be verb plus ja or seyo like it would be like that so it would <laughs> sorry i just read something sorry i'm not supposed to be distracted um so it would be so I would write that down, and that's what I really like about um, their books, like I was saying. They make, they give you an exact translation. So for this right here, let's just say, let's just say it was this one. I put down the verb. I put, I put down the Korean expression, grammar expression, the, the grammar structure, the grammar pattern, whatever you call it. I wrote down the grammar for it in Korean. So that would be verb plus jima. And that's the casual form and the English version of that would be don't verb so it's really simple like that or like this one right here go verb plus 
o yo chuseo, which is please make sure you verb or be sure to verb. So, oh, I just read, read, wrote this one last night. I just reviewed this one last night. Um, but yeah, so it's simple like that. I would just write the expression, English translation, give my examples for it, and then done. That helps me come back to the 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 book. And I have a new one now because I'm rewriting it because as you can see this is very scattered and you don't see how scattered it gets. It got very scattered because look at this. Look at that. Look at that. It just got very scattered so I had to had to rewrite it. It was getting full as well. So here's my new one. Here's my new one. And this is what it looks like now. Doesn't that look much better? I don't know what's making it like this. Okay, there it is. Doesn't it look much better this way? Yeah. So here you have, if you can see, with this lighting, the title of the book. I'm doing this a different way as well. So let me get into that as well. This is how I'm doing it. So I have section one. This is since this is going to be my new notebook, I'm trying to condense it as much as I can from this one. I'm not going to be writing every single one from this one. I'm just going to be writing the ones that I still don't remember even after writing it down in this notebook. So there are some that are not written in this one that are in this one because I remember them. So why would I need to write them down if I understand how to use them and understand what they mean? So that's the point I'm trying to make. So I'm going to be using these books right here. These are these color coded spots are books. So that is what I'm going to be. Those are the books that are going to be in this in this right here. Section one is going to just be review. Grammar I have rewritten. That's what section one is. Grammar from this notebook. When I get into section two, that's where it's just going to be random 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 grammar structures and I color coded them so that I can understand when I flip to a page oh it's pink oh it's pink I'm that's the Korean that's the real life Korean conversations book I understand see this is what I'm that this is what I was saying about color coding I'm very big on color coding because um sorry I'm very big on color coding because this helps me open my notebooks Boom, I know exactly what this is. It's purple. Oh, it's my Korean Grammar and Use Advanced Book. Oh, it's this um, maroon color, this maroon pink color. Oh, that's my t Talk to Me in Korean books. Oh, it's brown. That's my Hot Topic books. That's my Topic Prep books. So it's just like that, and it goes even deeper to um, it gets even deeper when you start to color code um, words that grammar structures that you know you don't remember or you keep forgetting stuff like that that stuff helps me color coding and opening it up and understanding what those colors mean I can find things much easier and that's why notebooks are so much easier for me in my opinion so yeah that is the simple to put it simply to wrap this all up put it simply how I'm learning grammar now is, I'm focused on review by the way, I'm, the only new information I am learning, the only new information I am learning as far as grammar goes, is with this book. This is the only book I'm using for new information. Every other book I've completed and I'm, let's see, I have, as far as grammar books go, one, two, three, four, four books that aren't complete. The rest of my grammar books, which I have about like eight, I I finished them. So it's just these four, these, the only things I'm working on right now for grammar are those books that I have not finished and I'm not touching any other books. I'm not buying any other books until those are completed. Um, actually that's, how many did I say? One, two, three. It's actually three instead of four. That's a reading book. I just remembered. Um, so yeah, it's just three books that are Korean grammar that I haven't finished. And those are going to be the, the core focus. 
As for the other Korean books I have, I am focused on review at this point in my studies. I'm going through another review phase, so that is what I'm going to focus on. Um, yeah, um, that's really it. So for Korean grammar, for new information, it's just this book. I'm learning new information. And how I'm going through that is, this is what I've started doing. I've started sectioning off, like especially with this book, because this book has a lot of idiomatic phrases and um, situational expressions, so I section them off. This one specifically is a, is a lesson for, yeah, advanced idiom expressions. This is for, for ear that you use with ear. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going through it, sectioning each lesson off. Here, you can see it better here. Sectioning each um, section of the book off. Drink every time I say section or sectioning. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can see it right here. This is one expression. Then here's the line to to border these two expressions and I go through a certain number each um, day so I so the other day on my Instagram on my study gram I posted a time lapse and I studied three grammar expressions um, yes yeah, I, I studied three expressions from this one lesson and today I'm gonna go back in and finish the last um, two right here this is the same one so this is the same one so one two one two <laughs> um i'm gonna finish those off and i'll be done with this one and i write down i put when there's expressions fixed expressions like that i put them in my flashcards app so that's also what i do so that's for going through the book going through the book i section it off and i take it i i tackle it in parts i don't do a whole lesson in one day nope you are not going to retain information like that, in my opinion. It's better to section it off, complete two, three at a time. One if you really don't want to do too much, but I do two or three in each lesson for this book. And then I come back the next day, review with notes, which I talked about. I just write the Korean ex grammar expression I write the English translation of it, and then I do example sentences. And then move on to the, the next two or three and repeat the process. So that is what I'm doing. I'm keeping it very simple and I'm keeping it straight to the point so that I don't confuse myself and so that I can go back when I'm immersing, when I'm, when I'm, immer when I'm immersing in, in Korean with, um, with TV shows like the Proud Family on Disney Plus or or Once Upon a Time on Disney Plus. I'm able to see an expression. Oh, I learned that one. And open my notebook. And here's what it means right here. And I can I can look at the sentence on the screen in the subtitles, read it. Okay, so if this means blah blah blah, then that means they must be saying blah blah blah. And it just helps me that way. Immersing, connecting the two. That's also how I'm learning as well. Through immersion. Um, yeah, so immersing in the content that I am learning within my books. I know a lot of people, people choose to learn through immersion and doing a lot of input and output. Well, output um, when they get to a certain level in the language, but... I've just had a rocky road with mine, so I have to, I'm constantly changing up the way I do things, and my studies just continue to evolve, so um, this one I think will be around for a long time because it's a perfect balance of immersion and, and actually hitting the books, so I think this is a good mix for me. I need, I need both, I do. I need to that's just the way I am I'm a hands-on learner if I can't touch the material if I can't touch the material like this and really connect with it like read it while I'm reading it and doing this and like 
scribbling all over it if I can't do that there's no way that it's going to stick in my mind it's just it's just how I learn and also through seeing it in context so that's why immersion is also a good way for me so yeah that is how I'm learning grammar these days oh my voice hurts but yeah <laughs> that's all for this video I hold on let me end it here okay so this is all for this section of the video I'll see you in the outro okay so it's outro Kiara here um saying thank you for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it I hope you skipped to the sections that you most needed and I hope you enjoyed it I hope that it was very helpful helpful for you and I will see you guys in my next video again um, my study gram is in the link below if you're not following me from there or coming to this video from there I do polls um, sometimes to ask you guys what you want to see on my next video so that would be helpful also I'm trying to do more community posts on here as well so I would love it if you guys um, hit the the bell icon so that so <laughs> Uh, I feel weird. I feel weird saying that like like I'm up there. <laughs> I am not up there. But um where was I going? Oh yeah, I'm trying to do more community posts so if you guys could hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you don't so you, so you don't miss a a um video and that you can see when I upload a community post where I am going to be doing polls as well. I'm trying to try to be more interactive with you guys on here. I'm really, I've really got it down on Instagram, so I'm trying to get here, I'm trying to get get with you guys here. So stay tuned. <laughs> got some amazing things coming for you guys. So that's all for this video, and see you in my next one.